I'm already a millionaire in my mind. I may not see it yet, but I believe it now. In the same way a seed is called by its finished form, I'm accepting my divine inheritance as a child of God. I'm meant to have life and have it more abundantly. My treasure on earth shall correspond directly to the treasure in the heaven of my mind. Abundance is my birthright. Ashe, amen, and so it is. My name is Julian Gordon, and I'm author of Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets to Mastering Money, Manifestation, and Your Mind. After becoming a multimillionaire through real estate investing, I was moved by God at the beginning of the pandemic to share my money mindset that allowed me to quit my job in January of 2009 at the bottom of the last recession and achieve full financial freedom. I own my mental real estate before I own any physical real estate. This book is like some of your favorites, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, As a Man Thinketh, Think and Grow Rich, and the Bible all in one. But the divine downloads and thoughts that are in here are 100% original and came to me over a six month period at the beginning of the pandemic. This book is normally $100 on Amazon if you went there right now, but I wanna give you access to it for free by inviting you to our next reading group. Yes, the reading group is 100% free. Every weekday for 100 days straight, I'll be reading and discussing the 10 money commandments in the book that make money come to you in your life easily, more frequently and abundantly. And it will take about 30 to 45 minutes as we read three to five pages per day until we finish the book and reprogram your mind around money. Why 100 days? Well, if you are 30 years old, you've lived for 10,950 days. And we have to deprogram and reprogram the negative scarcity-based money mindset society has taught you. And I believe I can do that in just 1% of the time in about 100 days. I'm done with shelf help. You know, when you buy a book to change your life, but you never read it, it just sits on your bookshelf and collects a whole bunch of dust, we off that. When is the last time you had an author actually read their book to you out loud because they cared about you getting the information in your soul? I'm not just here to get this book in your hands. More importantly, I wanna get it in your head and your heart because that's where the real transformation occurs in the conscious and the subconscious mind. As scripture says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is not the type of book that you just read once. To renew the subconscious mind requires repetition over and over and over. So if you joined us last time, I encourage you to join us again. I myself have read this book over 10 times already. So click the link to join our next reading group. And when you sign up, I'm gonna give you the first two chapters of the book for absolutely free on what is money and abundance is your birthright so that you can start your journey to a more abundant life today. Welcome, welcome to another day of Read Rich and Righteous. We're reading Rich and Righteous Spiritual Secrets and Mastering Money Manifestation in Your Mind. We are now on day 53 of this journey where we are reading about three to five pages every single day. And uh, it's actually over the course of 100 days, there are 72 readings. And when you add in the weekend, uh, we get to 100 days. We are on day 52 of the 72. Uh, we are about one month away from getting to the end of the book. Today's reading is actually rather short, but it's really, really powerful in that you'll be able to use what I teach you today every single day in your decision making when it comes to releasing money on anything. Um, today's chapter is called, Is It Expensive or Expansive? And when you look at those two words, there's only one letter difference, an E and an A, right? But if you choose things that are more expansive and choose less things that are expensive, you'll find that wealth comes to you rather naturally and easily. Uh, I want to celebrate everybody who's been here consistently over uh, the course of this journey. I see some 50 pluses in the chat, um, meaning that people have been here consistently at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every weekday since we began, or they've actually gone to richrightnow.com, um, got the replays, and caught up and for those of you who i see are in your 40s or 30s and or just heard about us um you can go to richrightnow.com richrightnow.com that allow you to sign up for the challenge for absolutely free and on the thank you page you can get the digital package or you can order physical copies of the book and with any um, purchase you also get the replays that you may have missed so go ahead and take advantage of that especially as we come to the conclusion and we stop reading at 8 30 a.m eastern standard time if you want to have those replays on deck so that you can go back through this content and continue to water and nurture your mind as the guard inner Right? You can go do that at richrightnow.com, and on the thank you page, you'll have those options. All right. So today's chapter, again, is rather short. It's, uh, what are we, literally, <laughs> um, three pages, three pages. So, uh, but again, um, this chapter will really shape how I think about 
using money okay we don't spend money because when we spend money we end money and it will help you in every single decision that you make when it comes to releasing money in your life all right so we are on page 283 we're on page 283 and um day 53 and uh, the question is is it expensive or expansive and the scripture for the day is matthew 13 44 and it says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field when a man found it he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field right the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field when a man found it he hid it and in his joy, went and sold all that he had, right? Sold it, converted that to money, and then he did what? He bought the field. So what is more valuable than that which you already have? That is a question. What is more valuable than that which you already have, right? Something that is expansive. Something that is expansive. And so that's what we're going to get into. So top of t page 283, top of page 283. Oh, yeah. Before I get into it, Rich and Righteous Graduation is coming up December 9th, and you can sign up at rrgraduation.com. That's rrgraduation.com. Uh, we have seats for 150 people in Atlanta, and then we will have a live stream link for those who can't make it. OK, so make sure you sign up for that. All right. It's absolutely free. So uh, we're on page 283. We are always seeking to resurrect and elevate energy into a higher state. That's what we're really doing. And we know that Christ consciousness is the highest state of thinking from our conscious mind. And so we're always trying to elevate. We're just meant to have the mind of Christ. Right. So when Christians say, what would Jesus do? Right. Or Paul writes, we are meant to have the mind of Christ or New Age folks say Christ consciousness. You realize that we're all saying the exact same thing in different ways. Right. We're trying to elevate. We're trying to have the mind of Christ. We're, ha we're trying to reach our peak. Right. Because when the devil was tempting Jesus or Satan was tempting Jesus, if you want to see that as allegorical or literal, where did Jesus go? Where was Jesus taken to the top of where the temple? Jesus was taken to the top of the temple. That was Christ consciousness. That was the highest level. And when you operate from that label, uh, level, you're able to see all that is yours. So now, even if something tempts you to say you can have this, you actually recognize that I already have this. What do you mean I can have this? You trying to give me something that is already mine? <laughs> my father, my father, mother, God, who are in heaven has already given this to me. I'm already a steward of this as a direct source or lineage of the one source. I'm a resource for the source. So how are you going to give me something that is already mine? <laughs> how are you going to give me something that is already mine? So when you have people who try to... Um, hold you cautious and say, oh, you won't be successful unless you do this with me. Or, um, you know, you think about this in the music industry uh, or movie industry. You got to do this with me in order for me to put you here. There's nobody in your way, family. There's no individual human being that stands in your way. When I say and when I conclude that you are be God to yourself, that you, right, are God in your life. You are first cause in your life. There's no individual institution or situation outside of yourself that controls your destiny more than you do. Right. And so you can't give me something that I already have. <laughs> you can't give me something that I already have. OK, so we are always seeking to resurrect and elevate energy to a higher state. The reason we spend money. Right. Is because we don't really want it. The reason we spend this. Right. And we know when we spend money, we what? We end money. The reason we spend money is because we really don't want this. We want to convert this into a higher state or experience. Right. So you may spend this at a restaurant because you want the experience of that food. And that is more valuable to you than you just having this hundred dollars in your pocket or in a bank account. OK, so this is why we spend money. Right. We seek it because what of what we believe the money can get us. Cash is the world's lowest yielding asset. But it is the most liquid. So the reason we value cash, again, is because of its liquidity. It can be easily converted into other experiences, right? This is the primary reason we value it. The man in the scripture above gave all that he had accumulated, which was his material wealth, to buy the treasure hidden in the field. So what is this treasure? The true treasure is wealth consciousness. The true treasure is wealth consciousness. 
and the field is a quantum field where all things are possible, right? So when people debate about whether they should buy this book for $100, do you want $100? You want me to give you $100? And I've actually done this. I went to Atlantic Station and um, I tested this out with quite a few people. I said, "Would you? do you want this? We're strangers. Do you want this $100 or do you want this book that will teach you how to manifest and create $100 on demand through the power of your mind, right? It goes back to the old... Uh, uh, I think it's called an adage or metaphor of you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, right? Teach a man a fish, he'll eat forever, right? So the true field is wealth consciousness. I will happily give up this to know how to produce this anytime that I desire it or need it, right? And so that's why I actually charge $100 for the book, okay? So the true treasure is wealth consciousness. Regardless of what your bank account looks like, the most valuable thing is knowing that you have wealth consciousness. As Jay-Z said, put me anywhere on God's green earth and I'll triple my worth. Take away my billion dollars and put me anywhere on God's green earth but in my awareness of who I am and my wealth consciousness will be able to recreate and reproduce that which you see me have today, right? So the true treasure is wealth consciousness and the field is the quantum field where I know that all things are possible despite what I see with my five senses, what I see and I'm experiencing with my five senses. The man above, he perceived wealth consciousness or mental wealth as more valuable than material wealth. That's why he sold all that he had. If you want to elevate to the next level in your life, you have to sell and release all that you have to get there. You have to sell and release all that you have that may be weighing you down and binding you to get to that next level. Some of you want to take all the things that you have with you to the next level. But the number one thing that you have to release is your old, more dense self. Your old self is the first thing that has to die. So when we talk about crucifixion, you go through many crucifixions in your life where you have to die to yourself in order to elevate, right? You used to date in this way, right? You thought it was just about exchanging gifts and 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 kissing and things of that nature. You thought that that was love. You had to die to self. You had an experience. You had to die to self to realize that love is actually Uh, something different than that, or that's an aspect, one aspect of love. Then you elevated to here, then you elevated to here, and hopefully you keep elevating to higher and higher states and awareness of love. The same thing with money. You thought that money was just something that was meant to be saved, so you were operating here, right? Then you realized that you were losing money due to inflation, and and you weren't getting paid anything by the bank, and so then you elevated to here. Now I want to use this, I want to invest this, and now I realize that not only do I invest it, but I actually can create it and, I, and, and the greatest currency is in me. And you continue to elevate in your wealth consciousness, right? And when you elevate, you can see more possibilities than before. So the quantum field, right, is where all things are possible, where I'm able to look at money and I'm able to look at life and the experience that I'm having from the highest mental state possible, from the top of my temple, okay? So he perceived wealth, wealth consciousness or mental wealth as more valuable than material wealth. You can teach a boy how to fish, but even more powerful than that is owning the pond where all of the fish are. Owning the pond is what we call wealth consciousness. Owning the pond is what wealth consciousness is. So everybody's type, I own the pond, okay? I don't just want to fish. I don't just want to know how to fish. I want to come into the awareness that I actually own the pond, that all things are possible for me in my life when I step into that awareness, that is wealth consciousness, right? Because if my mother father owned the pond, then guess what? I own the pond. If my mother father owned the pond, then I own the pond. So in order to use the stored energy you've been given at the highest level in your awareness, you have to know the difference between expensive and expansive. Something is expensive when the money leaves you and it never comes back. This is why some of you have been working for 10, 20, 30 years and you don't feel wealthy is because you've been purchasing things and using money on expensive things. You get one use out of the money. You spend it, and when you spend money, you end money, and it never comes back to you. Many of you right now, if you were to transition or to die, you would only leave behind some clothes, some furniture, and some electronics, and maybe a car, right? Now, you got multiple uses out of those things, right? But the money... You only got one use of. You worked 
hard for it, you use the greatest currency, which is the energy and breath in your body, right? You used the greatest currency to acquire this currency th to buy something that you got multiple uses of the thing that you bought, right? But you only got one use of the money that bought it. We want to figure out how to get multiple uses. If I'm going to trade my time and energy and my breath, right, in my body for money, I want to make sure that I get multiple uses out of this money, okay? So something is expensive when the money leaves you and never comes back. It has a short shelf life. It has a momentary value and depletes your bank account instantly. This is why we should uh, we should spend, right, SP hyphen END, as little money as possible. We want to use money, okay? There's a difference between spending money and using money. We want to use money as much as possible, but we don't want to, we want to spend money as little as possible. So everybody type SP hyphen END. SP hyphen END. I want you to see the um, suffix is END, okay? I want you to see that the suffix is END, okay? So we want to use we want to use money as much as possible. Right? It's not meant to just sit in a savings account, but we want to spend money. Want to spend it as little as possible. Okay? Cool. So something is expansive when the money leaves, right? It leaves you release it in God I trust I release the money and then guess what it comes back with more friends Benjamin goes and finds Lincoln's Hamilton's right and they come back to me so this is when something is expansive when I'm releasing this money knowing that it's gonna come back with more friends what did Puff Daddy say you tell your friends you get with my friends and we could be friends right you know I'm gonna recontextualize and spiritualize all these songs that we've been listening to for years you tell your friends, get with my friends, and we can be friends. So, Benjamin, you go tell your friends, get with my friends, and we can be friends. All right? <clears throat> okay? So, it has a long-term monetary value, though it may feel like it is depleting you in the short term without instant gratification. So, in the short term, you feel like you're losing money. That is going somewhere. You no longer have control or possession of it. Right. But in the long term, you know that because of what you put it into, that it's going to reap and come back. And the only way you reap is by doing what? The only way you reap anything is by sowing. You have to sow something. You have to sow something. And so if you've sown into fertile soil, right, then you know that over time, then that whatever you sowed into is going to bear fruit. OK, as we discussed earlier in commandment number one, everything costs time not just money. Everything costs time, not just money. So let's look at a Black Friday deal on a 50 inch flat screen TV and they're starting to promote Black Friday already, right? And we are just at the beginning of November now. So this is perfect, perfect timing, right? Divine timing. So let's look at a Black Friday deal on a 50 inch flat screen TV uh, through the lens of whether it is expensive or expansive. Remember, everything costs time, not just money, okay? So let's just say that the TV normally costs $1,200, but there's a Black Friday doorbuster to get, if, for you to get it for just $400, right? From a monetary perspective, it appears that you are saving $800. From a monetary perspective, it appears that you are saving $800. Now, if you only earn $20 per hour, you just save yourself 40 hours of work, $800 divided by 20 uh, dollars per hour equals um, 40 hours of work, right? So you're like, 40 hours, that's a whole work week. If I go buy this TV, I just save myself a whole work week, okay? That is an entire week of your life back if you take advantage of this door buster. But what is the actual cost of the TV, family? What is the actual cost of the TV? The true cost of a TV is all of the wasted time you will spend paying attention to the programs it offers. That's why they call it pay attention, family. That is the true cost of a TV. So you thought you were winning. You thought you were up because you got $800 off on this TV. No. 
the true cost is going to be what comes after you purchase the TV. Okay. Same thing. You eat unhealthy. You thought you were saving by eating off the McDonald's $1 menu, but the true cost is going to be the health issues that you have as a result of eating that kind of food over a consistent period of time. Right? So we have to look at the true cost. You can't, and what will that do? That will shorten your time here on earth and time is your most valuable asset, right? You can't afford to pay attention to an actor or athlete's life. You can't afford to pay attention to an actor or athlete's life. Some of y'all know more about what's going on in celebrities' lives than you know about your own life. You know what they doing, who they dating, what happened in their relationship. Some of you know more about celebrities' lives than you know about your own life. Make that make sense. Reality TV, right? You can't afford to pay attention to an actor or athlete's life. The average American spends over four hours per day watching TV. Okay, now that may not be you. That's just the average. Okay, that's one thousand four hundred and sixty hours per year, while the forty-hour work week totals up to two thousand hours per year. Okay, if you get two weeks of vacation, if you spent that time, that one thousand four hundred and sixty hours, figuring out how you could make it, make at least another forty dollars per hour outside of your job through an online business, you could have earned an additional $58,000. 1,460 hours times $40 per hour over the course of a year is $58,400. And if you were able to think beyond the hourly mindset, $100,000 per year is only $274 more per day. So if I did not buy that TV, right, and was paying attention to it, and I use all of my thought energy, this 1,460 hours of thought energy to how can I make $274 per day, whether I wake up or not, whether I do something or not, right? Which is $100,000 per year. Imagine that, okay? $100,000 per year is only $274 per day, which is only $11.42 per hour, which is only 19 cents per minute. In 1,460 1, hours, do you think you could find an idea that could pay you at least two dimes per minute? I think so. If you said no TV for the rest of the year, I'm going to use this 1,460 hours to sit with myself, to observe the world, to observe where I could be a blessing to people in a way that generates and brings and draws unto me at least two dimes, 19 cents per minute, even when I'm asleep. That would be $100,000 per year, family. See, this is a completely different reframe. It's looking at how you are utilizing your time. The true cost of that TV is not the $400 that you get at the doorbuster. The true cost of the TV is the time that you're going to spend watching it. And that time, right, that you are paying attention to something else in somebody else's life and what's going on outside of you, you could have been focused on what's going on inside of you and how you could actually be a blessing, a greater blessing to your fellow brothers and, uh, brothers and sisters, to the other children of God in this world and how you could serve and serve in a way that only yields unto you two cents. I mean, two dimes per minute. Two dimes per minute. I think over the course of 1,460 hours, you could come up with with an idea, not only come up with it, but actually build a solution, a solution, and execute an idea that draws unto you two dimes per minute, okay? I've seen people on the subway, right? People are bored on the subway. They're going to a job that they hate. They want some entertainment. I've seen kids on the subway generate two dimes per minute by dancing, doing tricks, singing, etc., playing instruments, two dimes per minute. Now, could they do that 24 hours a day? No, right? Because you have to sleep. But at least they are out there trying. They, they're out there being a solution. See, being a solution doesn't mean like somebody has a real, real problem. They realize that being on the subway is boring. People are going to places that they hate. They're packed up in this little can, right? And they need a smile on their face. And so now, does everybody on that subway car give them money? No. But there are enough people that make it sustainable enough for them to continue to do it. 
because then they just go to the next car and the next car and the next car and they ride that subway up to Manhattan, right, to Harlem, and they ride it back down to Brooklyn, and they do that a couple times, and you'll be surprised at how much money flowed to them because they brought joy to people in a moment where they weren't feeling that great or they just wanted to, they enjoyed the show, period, right? You have that power and that creativity inside of you. Remember, money is not the issue. It is your mindset and your creativity, okay? So bottom of two, page 284. Based on the old way of thinking about money, you thought the TV was inexpensive because it was on sale at a 63% discount. But you already know that a major electronics company wouldn't sell something for less than it cost them to make, market, and distribute. So did you really get a discount? When you learn to see this purchase through the lens of expensive or expansive, you realize that this TV initially appeared to save you $800 financially, but it actually cost you $58,000 in additional income. If it lasts for five years, okay, let's say this TV lasts for five years. You see, I'm not using this TV to watch it. I'm using this TV to share with you. So I'm using this TV for a completely different purpose. I've never watched this TV, okay? Right? This TV is expansive for me where somebody else could use it and it's expensive for them. They're watching it. I'm using it to be watched. They're watching the TV. I'm using it to be watched by hundreds and thousands of you over the course of this reading. Now, you are watching me on a computer screen or a TV, but you are ingesting and digesting information that is transforming your life. So there are ways, like even if you are watching a TV, based on what you watch on it, also has a huge impact on how expensive or expansive it could be. It all depends on the intention and the way that you use it. Like you could go get a fancy car, right? But are you using that just to show off to people when you pull up to a party or to a restaurant and VIP? Or are you using it to promote your business? Is your logo on the side of it? So it's the same exact thing, but the intention behind how that person is using it actually depends on, determines whether it is expensive or expansive. Are you understanding? Okay, so it's not necessarily the thing, right? It is actually how you use the thing that you purchase that determines whether it is expensive or expensive. Is this making sense? Okay. So if this TV lasts for five years, and again, we're talking about the average American. You all are not average. You all are not average. Okay. Average American watches TV four hours per day. Okay. If that TV lasts for five years, the true financial cost of that TV is 58,000 times five, which is $292,000. $292,000, a quarter million dollars lost because that person's thought energy was being sucked into the TV as opposed to them churning that thought energy within and then using it to produce something outwardly for the world to benefit from, okay? And when the TV is no longer useful after five years, you will not have expanded your personal, intellectual, social, and financial capital at all because of it. You are using the screen, whatever screen you're watching me on, you're using it to expand your personal capital, which is your awareness of who you are, your intellectual capital, which is what you know, your social capital, which is the community you're building in the chat and at Rich and Righteous graduation, and of course, your financial capital by learning all these different ways to manifest more money in your life. So you're using this screen that you're on right now, right, to actually expand yourself. But the average American, which you are not average, you are extraordinary, right, is using the TV in the wrong way, thinking they're getting a discount on Black Friday. Now, we just use this Black Friday example, but this applies to any purchase you have. Anytime you're about to pull out your credit card, your debit card, or cash to pay for something, I want you to ask the question, is this expensive or is it expansive? Is it expensive or it's expansive? And if you have any doubt in your mind, if it's expansive, then it's likely expensive. If you have any doubt in your mind, uh, I don't know about this, Julian, I can't really make an argument or I can't really see the logic behind this being expansive in my life, then it's likely expensive and it's going to cost you. It's not only going to cost you that financial amount in the moment, but there's likely going to be additional cost to it afterwards. Okay. This is why I don't watch TV much. I watch one show at a time and I might follow one team during the NBA postseason. That 
is it. No watching power if you have no power in your life. No watching the show power if you have no power in your life. No watching Breaking Bad if you keep catching bad breaks. No watching Scrubs if you are a scrub. <laughs> All right? No watching Insecure if you have no financial insecurity. No watching the NBA when you could be getting your MBA online for free via YouTube University or participating in Read Rich and Righteous. So we have to recontextualize how we see these things that we're purchasing and we have to ask, are they expensive or are they expensive? Has your time and money gone to expensive things, right? That you perceive were inexpensive or expensive? Has your time and money gone to actually expensive things that you initially perceived as being inexpensive or uh, expensive? The bigger, t the bigger the TV, they say, the smaller the bank. The bigger the TV, the smaller the bank. Many of the things you thought were inexpensive have actually cost you a lot of time and money. And no, that's why they say nothing's really for free. Right. Like timeshares. That's one of the greatest traps. Timeshares. They say, oh, yeah, come to this meeting and we'll give you two nights free at the Marriott and such and such. And you go into that meeting and they won't let you leave until you've seen the entire presentation, et cetera. And then so many people end up. I still don't understand how so many people end up getting sucked into that timeshare thing. Right. And now they're trapped in a timeshare and they can't get out and it's affecting their credit, this and that, all because of two free, uh, perceived two free nights at a hotel. How many of y'all got caught up in some timeshare meeting before? When you understand sales psychology and things of that nature, you just laugh when you're in there, right? And you're like, y'all are wasting my time. Let me out of this prison. But it catches a lot of people. That's why they keep doing it, right? Because they perceive something as being inexpensive or free and it actually costs them on the back end. OK, so many of the things you thought were inexpensive have actually cost you a lot of time and money and not purchasing. Listen to this. OK, the other way around and not purchasing many of the things you thought were expensive, but were really expansive, have cost you a lot of time and money that you could have had to. OK, so anytime you have a financial decision to make, ask yourself, does this feel expensive or expansive? And when your answer is expansive, expensive, excuse me. And when your answer is expensive, remind yourself that this is a cause, not a cost. This is a cause that will have a positive effect in my life, not a cost that will have negative effects. That's the difference between a cause and a cost. We live in a universe that is governed by the law of cause and effect. So when something is perceived as expensive, right, remind yourself or expensive. When something is perceived as expensive, it will have a cost, which is negative effects. When it is actually expansive, it will be a cause that has positive effects. OK, the, every cause has effects. So that's the difference between a cost and a cause, a cost and a cause. A cost is expensive. A cause is expensive. All right. When your answer is expansive, remind yourself that this is a cause that will have positive effects, not a cost that will have negative effects in my life. All right. So that simple questioning, that simple questioning will change the way you use this. Anytime you pull out your debit credit, uh, debit or credit card or cash and you're about to put it towards something. Ask that question. If it's expansive. Right. It will be a cause that has positive effects. If it is expensive, it will be a cost that has negative effects in your life. All right. So today's reading was short. It was only three pages. I went in a little bit more beyond just the text. But um, that concludes today's reading. Um, so much richness here. And we went deep on the example of the TV. But I want you to think about all the purchases that you make, the ones that come up today. The ones that you've made recently, if you need to go look at your bank statement and just look at, hey, where, where has my money been going? And 
are these things expensive or are they expansive? Am I using my cell phone just to gossip and to chat and, and talk to people and there's nothing fruitful coming from my conversation? You'll notice that rich people don't just hang out on the phone, y'all. Or am I using this cell phone to actually do something positive? Am I having rich conversations, right? Am I learning? Am I checking in on those that I really, really love? Am I staying connected, right? How am I using this phone, this device, right? That will determine whether it's expensive or expansive. So look at all of the purchases that you've made, right? And how you've been spending money. Are you spending money? Are you using money? Is it expansive or is it expensive? Is it a cause or is it a cost? And that will determine if you continue to make more decisions that are expansive, right? If you use money in a way that is expansive, over time, you do that consistently and it will create wealth for you, all right? So uh, that concludes not only this chapter, but it also concludes commandment number seven. And tomorrow we'll be getting into money commandment number eight, which is how the rich and righteous manifest money and wealth. All right. So we'll be starting a new commandment tomorrow. Um, the first section of that is the three ways to create as creators, as little gods. We are creators, too. And we want to go over the three ways to create the life that you desire. So I will catch you tomorrow at 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I love you. I love you. I love you. Remember, be God to yourself. Love yourself as God loves you. OK, master yourself as God is master over you. And remember that you are God or first cause in your own life and no individual institution or situation outside of yourself has more power over the trajectory of your life than you. I will see you tomorrow, family. Love you. Peace. What's up, y'all? It's Julian Gore from the Multi Family Movement, and this is my community behind me. It's 300 of us out here in Baton Rouge for our tour of our commercial properties, our flips, our vacant lots. We're also raising money uh, just to build this real estate portfolio collectively through group economics. So it's so beautiful to see everybody here. We six buses deep. This is also our building behind us at Legacy on 14th Street. So this is real estate in real life, and this is real people. This is not just some online community or course. We out here really doing it together as a collective. Collective. So this is family, multi-family movement in the building. Everybody say multi-family on three. The whole crew, y'all. So when you want to learn how to get in the game.